Hello guys, I am here to demonstrate axilla in cadaveric specimen. Sometimes it becomes very easy for us to understand the structures by seeing colorful images in the atlases. But it is very very important to identify the most important structures, especially the neurovascular structures of the axilla. So let me start the discussion with this beautiful image. So the image what you can see here, this image is the anterior view of the axilla and the pectoral region where the pectoralis major and axillary fat are removed. Now we can observe cut ends of the pectoralis minor as well as the deltoid. We, can, we could clearly see the borders of these cut sections. And these muscles are partially removed to expose the main contents which are present in the axilla. So if you see superiorly, the clavicle is clearly visible and the arm muscles are on the lateral aspect and the rib cage is on the medial aspect. So the muscles beneath the clavicle, what is the muscle which is present beneath the clavicle, immediately beneath the clavicle, which is the subclavius and it is attached below to the first rib. And we can also appreciate the axillary vessels which are running towards the arm. That is the medial vessel is axillary vein and the lateral vessel which is partially seen is the axillary artery. And the nerves which are associated with the axillary vessels are the branches of cords of the brachial plexus which can be appreciated well in this image. And the nerve which runs towards the lateral aspect of the axillary artery is the musculocutaneous nerve, which supplies the muscles of the anterior compartment of the arm. And it runs deep to the short head of the biceps. The short head is partially cut, mainly to expose the nerve, which is the musculocutaneous nerve. And the long head of the biceps lies in the bicipital groove which joins with the short head to form the main biceps brachii muscle. So here the formation of the median nerve is clearly observed overlying the axillary artery. And the muscle present on posterior aspects is the latus muscle dorsi. And the thoracodorsal nerve and artery are well seen supplying the latus muscle dorsi over here. And the muscle which is forming the posterior wall of the axilla is the subscapularis. And also another important muscle which is the serratus anterior which is partially seen along with its nerve which is the long thoracic nerve. Remember that long thoracic nerve is also known as nerve of bell. The long thoracic nerve supplies serratus anterior muscle. So in this specimen we can also appreciate upper four ribs along with its intercostal muscles. So all the structures which are present in this image we have understood really well. Now let us concentrate on another image here. This is the image of the same specimen but uh, after removal of the clavicle. You could compare with these two images very clearly. One is with the clavicle, another one is after removing the clavicle. Now all the components of the brachial plexus are well appreciated in this image after the clavicle is removed because these brachial plexus are traveling behind the clavicle, right? And the axillary vessels are removed where we can appreciate the cut ends of the subclavian and the axillary arteries which are well marked over here. We could appreciate these vessels very clearly. And the proximal cut end is subclavian artery peeping out from the lateral border of the scalenous anterior muscle which continues as the axillary artery whereas the distal end is axillary artery and it continues as the brachial artery. So before entering into arm it gives off a branch called as subscapular artery which overlies the muscle called as subscapularis. So starting with the roots, we can see the roots of the brachial plexus which are emerging out from the lateral aspect of the scalenous anterior muscle and the three trunks of the brachial plexus are clearly seen 
Let us try to name them upper trunk, middle trunk and lower trunk. All the trunks are well appreciated here. So the three chords of the brachial plexus are also clearly demonstrated. The lateral chord is present on the lateral aspect and the medial one is present on the medial aspect. So the thicker one is the posterior chord which is overlapped by the medial chord. And some prominent branches of these chords are also observed. So let's begin with the musculocutaneous nerve which can be identified as it pierces the coracobrachialis muscle because we have stated this in the course of the musculocutaneous nerve. It pierces the coracobrachialis muscle and the nerve along with the brachial artery what we can see over here is the medial nerve. And the thick branch which appears as the continuation of the posterior cord is what? Is the radial nerve, right? The posterior cord gives rise to radial and axillary. And it runs posteriorly into the posterior compartment of the arm because it supplies the muscles of the posterior compartment of the arm. And the latissimus dorsi and thoracodorsal nerves are also observed over here. And the nerve which is medial to the thoracodorsal is the long thoracic nerve which is partially seen and we know that this long thoracic nerve is supplying serratus anterior muscle. Right? So now let us try to change the image and try to appreciate uh, other structures, deeper structures. Now let's try to identify the deeply situated posterior cord of the brachial plexus in this image. So in this image, first we shall demarcate the dissected structures. First try to observe the cut end of the conjoint tendon formed by the coracobrachialis and short head of the biceps arising from the coracoid process. And here exactly the deltoid is removed completely and the cut ends of the long head of the biceps crossing the bicepital groove is made out. We know that in the previous image itself the clavicle was already removed to expose the deeper structures. And laterally the cut end of the terminal part of the axillary artery is clearly seen with one of its branches called as subscapular artery and further axillary artery continues as a brachial artery in the arm. We know this. So remember that the deep branch of the brachial artery, we have a name to it. What is the deeper branch of the brachial artery? Most important branch, which is the profunda brachii artery. So deep branch of the brachial artery known as profunda brachii artery courses into the posterior compartment of the arm. Now let us focus on the medial side. So medial side at the root of neck, scalenus anterior is well demarcated and the cut ends of upper, middle and lower trunks are seen along with the cut ends of the subclavian artery. Let's try to demarcate them and try to learn all these structures and we should try to correlate with the gross anatomy textbooks also. So it is very important for all of us to know the anatomy with the cadaveric specimens as well as with the beautiful colorful images. We always should try to correlate between what we know with the colorful images with these cadaveric images. And let us talk about the axillary nerve here. We can see that axillary nerve courses towards the circumflex humeral arteries and these vessels are the branches of the axillary artery. And next one, whatever I'm going to show you is the thickest branch of the radial nerve which is coursing towards the posterior compartment along with the profunda brachii vessels. And other structures, the most important structures will be the thoracodorsal nerve, which is, we know that it is directly branching from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus. And this thoracodorsal nerve innervates the latissimus dorsi. And the other nerve is the long thoracic nerve. I have mentioned multiple times, but still we can see the nerve in this image. Therefore, it is important for us to mark this, which can be clearly seen, which is running along the thoracic wall and supplying the serratus anterior muscle. So therefore, we have completed the demonstration of the axilla in cadaveric specimens. Thank you so much for listening.